This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This brief chapter looks at the use of IT in businesses, particularly with reference to spreadsheets, databases and accounting systems. First of all, spreadsheets, and almost certainly you're all familiar with uh, spreadsheets. Uh, it's a grid, uh, the columns A, B, C, D across the uh, screen, uh, the uh, rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, going down the screen and so on. And each cell uh, is referenced by the column and uh, row reference. So uh, B4 here is this cell. Uh, which uh, is got the 7,000 in it. And you can move the cursor around highlighting different cells. There are three different contents of any particular cell. You can have what's called a label, which is basically a word. So uh, uh, what we have in here in our label is sales, costs and profits. Those are all labels or words or text if you prefer. You can put in numbers, so here the 10,000 and the 3,000 are numbers which have been typed in as 10,000 and 3,000. Uh, but the real breakthrough, if you like, of spreadsheets, which separate them from just being a kind of complicated word processing, is the third type of content is a formula. And in cell B4, so here, this is saying we're looking at cell B4, which is here. Although what we see is 7,000, what is displayed to us is 7,000, what is actually in there is this formula, B2 minus B3. So 10,000 minus 3,000 is this 7,000. Uh, the great thing, of course, is that if you were to change any of these numbers, if instead of sales of 11, uh, 10,000, you were to put in 11,000, this would immediately change then down here to 8,000. Uh, 11,000 minus 3,000. And uh, of course they're relatively easy to, to, to set up. You can copy across and as you copy across all the references update and so on. And you could very quickly you know, do a, a kind of January, February, March, etc. for 12 months uh, by taking this little uh, three little cells, copying them across and, and so on. And in this column, this here would then be referring to C2 minus C3, then D2 minus D3. Fantastically useful for budgets and cash flows and so on. What people can do is they can do what's known as what if experiments. Uh, they're, you're not never quite sure on a, on a budget what the correct figures are because you're always kind of guessing about the future. So you can try experiments, you know, what if we could increase sales by 3% and decrease costs by 1%? what would the resultant profit look like? And it kind of instantly ripples through and gives you a, a, a new look at the company. So the, the well-known, particularly well-known one now is Excel. Whereas you've probably used uh, spreadsheets, you may not have used databases. And databases, we all have the feeling, of course, that a database is a vast amount of data which has been uh, uh, accumulated and of course it is uh, but in, in particular if you have a, a vast amount of data it's liable to be fairly diverse uh, perhaps the, the key characteristic of a, of a database is that out of this vast uh, array of data many people many departments can use that data update it and share it the great thing is that then the data only needs to be held once. Under old file management systems, uh, you would have maybe the personnel department who would keep a kind of copy of the uh, employee's personnel records, including their salary. Then in a completely different file, you would have wages and salaries, keeping a record of their salary again. And the, uh, the, the problem is if somebody's salary changes, you have to uh, remember to to change it every 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 file it occurs in, and for a little while people may be looking at one person and seeing different versions of what the salary is. In a database, the data is centralised and everybody is given their little view, perhaps a little sub view of the data which is in there. 
So there's great consistency and there's much less bother in updating it. Structured query languages make it relatively easy uh, to extract data uh, from a database, data of particular interest. So uh, it's very simple commands here uh, in a typical Microsoft type of SQL structured query language. So uh, you don't need to, to, to understand or kind of learn this in particular, it's just, just for reference. But you've got a huge database of employees and you want to find out who earns more than 40,000 or maybe who, are, who, who speaks German uh, or, or who's got a particular engineering degree. Assuming salaries and language skills and de nature of degree are held in the database, it's very easy to almost immediately find the people who qualify. So what this is saying, the command here is from employee, which means from the employee database. What we want to extract from that are people's names and salaries. We don't want their address, we don't want their tax code, we don't want their uh, um, staff appraisals, you just want name and salary. So in other words we're selecting or show just their name and salary. But we don't want everybody, we just want people who are paid over 40,000 so where the salary is over 40,000 and then we're going to display this information in name order alphabetical list of people in your company earning more than 40,000 and it could be tens of thousands of people in your company there might only be two or three who you know meet the criteria that you're interested in and almost instantly it will come out and it will uh, be able to report the people who fulfill the uh, particular criteria, the were criteria uh, that you're interested in. And then there is the everyday use of accounting. Accounting was one of the first uses of IT. <coughs> of course what people would do is, 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 is do the debits and credits within that there. Uh, so they would use it to produce invoices or so they would uh, uh, be crediting sales, debiting the uh, receivables account and so on there, keeping that in balance. And one of the great things about uh, accounting IT is that it very rarely get a, a trial balance that doesn't balance. However, once you have bothered doing the debits and credits, you have an awful lot of information in there which can be further processed to give you really interesting management information. So, at a touch of a button you can get a profit and loss account, you can get a statement of financial position. If you have put all your invoices in there, then uh, again you can very quickly get an aged uh, uh, receivables listing uh, without having to go through it manually and sort it all out into its age categories. Inventory movements. We might be interested in, you know, inventory that hasn't moved, hasn't sold for the last three months. Maybe we need to get rid of it in some way. We can use it to produce invoices, and that takes an awful lot of um, work, really, out of you know multiplying fourteen of this product at a price of fifteen point five. Is this add on the VAT? Add it up. Check all that to make sure it's correct and so on. Uh, this this is all done automatically. And then we can, of course, uh, have for management accounting a uh, comparison of actual and budgeted results. Uh, and it will basically subtract the actual and the budget. It will show what are known as variances. And management should be particularly interested in large variances, large discrepancies between what we expect to happen and what actually did happen. And of course, it can be programmed to, to highlight uh, uh, where maybe the planned uh, where the actual results are maybe more than 10% adrift from the planned results. So we get a, a, a you know kind of management by exception saying to management, here's the areas where you really need to spend a lot of your time where things have not gone according to plan. 